What's good? It's your boy Fanon. Here to talk about a little bit of boxing. And you know one of my favorite boxers is Errol Spence Jr., The Truth. And when I first started this channel, man, one of the very first fights that I covered and I gave my opinion on was Errol Spence Jr. versus Kell Brook. And it seems as if heading into around that time last year, you know, this is beginning of March. You know, I think that was around the May time frame, somewhere around there. We, we started talking about this lead up. <laughs> and now we back at it, man. Kell Brook is bananas. And Kell Brook's going to wind up talking himself into getting real hurt. Errol Spence Jr. says something about him. He said, man, look, if you really want to do it, I'll break both your eye sockets next time. And I'm telling you, man, Errol Spence ain't playing. He'll do just that. Kell, slow your roll, man. Slow your roll. Hey, first things first, though, before I get into the details of that, you know, shout out to all of, to the new subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and supporting the channel and the cause we supported the channel. You know, it's been, you know, a lot of growth lately. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, real positive relationship that, you know, I had with some other channels, uh, specifically 78 Sports TV and the LDBC. I really appreciate you guys being open enough to listen to the content um, and it really enjoyed the collaborations. Also, the young, the uh, some of the smaller channels like Corey Lee Boxing, Ty Legacy um, uh, and a couple of the other LDBC channels that did uh, collaborations with. I, mean, I really appreciate it. We look forward to doing more. Uh, soon now to get the live streams because we talk about all the stuff on the live streams as well please subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon so you can participate in the real-time discussions that uh the subscribers and you know people that tune into the channel listen uh that we have it's for basically it's for a mature audience you know people that are really you know serious about boxing can be respectful to one another and have a real good conversation, you know, have different opinions, but at the same time, um, be able to share those opinions with each other without being disrespectful. And that's the kind of environment we're trying to foster. Uh, but we do them, we don't do them on a regular, on a regular schedule. So the best way to know about them is to hit the subscribe and then hit the bell icon. Uh, also you can follow me on Twitter and the articles that I discuss, I will share on Twitter as well. So with that with that out of the way, uh, yeah, man, I'm a little bit late. This actually come out yesterday, and the tweets came out from from Errol Spence yesterday. But I was really on the Manny Pacquiao uh, top rank Canelo Alvarez thing yesterday, so I didn't really have I wasn't able to get to it. But this morning, man, I'm fresh and ready to go. Got my coffee. Want to talk about it? Spence warns Brooke, Kell Brooke. Next time, I'll break both your eyes. IBF welterweight champion Errol Spence, who's 23 and 0 with 20 KOs, exploded when he read the statements that were made by his former opponents, his former opponent Kell Brook. 37 and 2 with 26 KOs. In a recent interview, Brook made it clear that he would batter Spence if they ever had a rematch at junior at the junior middleweight limit of 154 pounds. Brooke made his junior welterweight debut last week in Sheffield and demolished Sergei Rebchenko in two rounds. Prior to that, Brooke was stopped in back-to-back -back fights with Spence at welterweight and Gennady Golovkin at middleweight. Against Spence, which took, last, which took place last May in Sheffield, Brooke was stopped in the 11th round after suffering a fractured orbital bone. At the new weight, Brooke expects a one-sided fight in his favor. I can leave, he can leave his world title without losing it and come up to 154 pounds or a catch weight. I will beat Errol Spence Jr. And at this new weight, I will destroy him. He will be, he should be looking forward, but he's looking behind because he's not happy with how he got the world title. I was beating him. Then I couldn't see. The new weight is a diff, is a big difference in the summertime. I will fight him at Brama Lane. Let's do it again. It will be revenge. It won't be a repeat. Brooke told Sky Sports. Spence took to social media and lashed out. You got to get a title first, mate. Next time I'll break both your eyes. Both your eyes. Keep talking. <laughs> Spence is dated. Brooke fired back claiming that Spence began their war of words last weekend. I ain't your mate. 
You stopped the you started the talking, so uh, stop hiding behind the belt. Man up rather than shat than shat than shout man down. Uh keep your belt nice and cozy. Come see me at 154. I won't take your belt, just your old, then your heart. Brooke rattled back. Spence will return to the ring on July 16th in Dallas, Texas against an opponent to be announced, but is likely going to be mandatory challenger Carlos Campos after the two sides reach a deal on the money a a few weeks ago. And if sometimes, if you guys hear me stuttering when I'm reading this stuff from a boxing scene, just sometimes, man, they really... I don't know who the editor is over there, man, but they really do let some stuff just straight slip. So I find myself having to try to correct them sometimes because they have just, you know, a word here or there, man. I don't know if they're doing this thing by just, you know, I don't know how they're doing it, man. But these cats need a better editor because for sure they it's like several articles I've read now that I just have to stop and say, hold on. He doesn't mean they don't mean what they're writing there. Anyway, it is what it is. And look, let me get back to this. All right, man. First of all, what what in the world problem would it would have would Errol Spence Jr. have had with how he won that belt? He beat you up, dude. He beat you up. He beat you up, and he stopped you, and he broke his he broke your eye. And the thing is, the reason why you say you're up on the cards, I do think that you know Kell Brook was fighting a good fight. But the reason that you stopped being able to see. It's because Errol, Errol Spence Jr. broke your eye socket. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey, I was winning until he broke my eyeball. I mean, you know, he's winning until he broke my jaw. You know, hey, man, I was really up in that fight until I went unconscious. I mean, come on, man. That's ridiculousness. That's ridiculousness. And here, how about this? Why would he go back to Bramma Lane? Yeah, we can fight at Bramma Lane. Let's do it again. Come back over here. Come back overseas to fight me overseas. No, how about you get your your, you know, Get your reconstructed face and come over to come um, come to Dallas and fight in Dallas. Why should Errol Spence go to, go to you? Come over here. Come over here and get broken down, man. And you fly in your plastic surgeon with you. Fly in your whatever the eye doc. What do we call it? What's the guy? The reconstructive surgeon. Fly them all here with you. Because more than likely, man, that same thing is going to happen, man. Same thing is going to happen. Errol Spence Jr. is going to will absolutely mop up and finish Kelbrook worse than he did the last time. Because the last fight, Errol Spence Jr., that was his first title fight. That was his first shot at a title. Flying half, fly, flying halfway around the world to fight you in your own hometown. And he busted you up. Errol Spence Jr., at his new weight, you're going to let Errol Spence come in at 154 pounds? Kel Brook, you're not bigger. Than, Kel Brook is not bigger than Errol Spence. Errol Spence Jr. just disciplined and can make his weight. But Errol Spence Jr. is not some little, he's not some little dude. And if you let him come in at 154 or a catch weight, you might really get beaten up. Like, I mean, you're going to really get beat up anyway, man. I just really wish that this dude will come on with it and just go on ahead and fight Amir Khan. Keep Errol Spence Jr.'s name out of your mouth, man. Keep his name out of your mouth. That's not a good matchup for you. It's it's you're just asking to get really, really hurt. Okay? It might go just like Andre Durrell versus uh Uskadegi. I thought that uh Andre War uh, Andre uh Durrell in the second half of that fight really did some stuff where he started winning some rounds. But hey man, next fight, what happened? Uskadegi made a, a made adjustments. Watched the tape, made adjustments, knew what this dude was going to do, and he beat him half silly, man, and stopped the fight, man. Made his corner, made his, made his corner throwing his how. They've been in the ring with you, Kel. They've been in the ring with you. Derrick James knows what you're going to do. Unless you got some other, other plan that you're going to come with, Errol Smith Jr. knows how you're going to fight. He saw you coming over his jab. He saw all of that stuff. He's felt, how, he's felt your power. He's felt all that. And he also knows that you're fragile. You're fragile. Your face is fragile. <laughs> your face is fragile. And more than likely, your heart is fragile because you know what that dude's doing. So you talking shit from halfway across the pond. But that's cool. Keep on talking. But at the end of the day, just let it be talking. Don't be silly enough 
to come try to make some action of it. You try to make some action of it, it's going to get ugly. Straight up, it's going to get ugly. And uglier, because he's even talking that stuff about Charlo. I mean, Jermell Charlo, you know, when Jermell Charlo says, somebody asked Jermell Charlo, you know, who are you fighting next? And he said, oh, you know, I'm, um, I don't know, I'm looking for somebody real easy, you know, somebody real soft touch. Hey, man, Kell Brook, man, if you knock this dude out, you can come get it. <laughs> He's like, man, I just had two, I just had two, two tough fights, man. You know, I fought, you know, my man, I think it was a J-Rock. I just fought Julian Williams on 154, just fought Erickson Lubin. You know, those were tough guys. You know, it didn't go, it, it ended quick for Erickson Lubin. But, hey, man, at the same time, man, you know, that was some dude he had to prepare for. But, you know, give me a soft touch. Give me Kell Brook. Man, seriously, man, people licking their chops looking at you, it's, it's not a good look, man. It's not a good look. He trains with the guy that beat you up. And he'll tell you, ah, this is what you do to him. Uh, this is what he's looking And Come on, man, just stop. But I appreciate the yap yap. Hopefully, you know, you can use Errol Spence's name to build up your next fight. But go the direction of, of Amir Khan. Amir Khan is not a promised victory for Kell Brook. Because Amir Khan can box. Amir Khan, Amir Khan does have a little pop to it to on him too. You know, I do make fun of his chin because it's non-existent. But that is the, you know, but that is an intriguing fight. And hopefully, you know, you need to listen to you need to listen to Eddie Hearn, man. Because Eddie, I don't think Eddie Hearn really wants that, man. I mean, that's just trash can for you, man. And on top of it, it's 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 not just trash can type of fight, man. Like literally after you get done with it. He's going to put you in a trash can like you're just done. We got to let him go. No, we no more fights for you. Right. License revoked. Right. That type of thing. Also, man, it's just I mean, it's almost it's it's life threatening. I mean, when I made a, I made a video leading up to the Errol Spence Jr. Kellbrook fight like, man, I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know, this dude really might end Errol Spence might end. Kell Brook's career just because of the way they fight and the way that Errol Spence Jr. fights. Errol Spence Jr. And, and I thought it was coming off of the Gennady Golovkin fight. And I saw what Gennady Golovkin did to him. So I was like, no, nah. no, you think you might be thinking you going down and waiting. You got a guy that's not as strong and maybe, you know, you can box and do what you did to, you know, for against Gennady Golovkin, be it, but be able to do it a little more easily and without as much danger against Errol Spence. But that's not true. That wasn't true. Because because Errol Spence Jr. is very, very strong and he hits very hard. Please check out the Lamont Peterson fight and watch how hard this young man is hitting. He's getting stronger. So anyway, I'm thinking for this one, instead of he might end his career, hey man, seriously, that's, some, that's something that might really, you know, that might really go south for Kell Brook especially since he's talking. And when you see somebody like Errol, I'll break both eye sockets. I mean, Errol Spence Jr. probably will. He'll knock them screws out your head, man. You got screws in your eyeballs, man, or behind your eyeballs. I still don't understand how they let this dude fight, man. It shouldn't even be allowed. He's got titanium. He's got titanium plates behind his eye socket. The last time he had to do that surgery, they literally had to remove his eye socket for the kit for the, after the Gennady Golovkin fight, they have to take his eyes ball out of the socket in order to do that. I have to, I suspect it was the same process. So now he's had the other one removed and had, the, and they did the work behind the eyeball and put the eyeball back. Come on, man. What are you doing in a boxing ring, man? What are you doing in a boxing ring? Trying to get your pride back. You got it back, man. Rob Chanko didn't hit you in the eye. You were good. You kept yourself clear. You got to win. Overhand right over a dude, boom, you're looking good, man. You and your wife get to have a party at the end of the night and say, hey, man, you know, yeah, we're back, we're back. But don't get it, don't get it twisted, man. Don't get it twisted and don't get carried away. That is fool's gold over here in Texas, man. You know what I mean? That's fool's gold. That's fool's gold in Texas. This boy will hurt you, man. Listen to Eddie Hearn. Take the Amir Khan fight, man. If you want to come over to the United States, man, do so on this bunk-ass undercard, this fight that Eddie Hearn's trying to set up with Anthony Joshua in order to uh, avoid Deontay Wilder. 
Man, in a related issue, Eddie Hearn said that he was going to, you know, yeah, we believe uh, Deontay Wilder is going to be next, maybe no October, May, November, maybe December, you know, somewhere in there. Um, but um, if not, you know, we're coming to New York City. You know, we're, you know, we already got it. I think he said he's got a date it in New York at New York City. Um, I haven't actually heard that interview, so you know, take that with a grain of salt. And I also heard he dismissed him in any conversation about uh, Anthony Joshua going over to HBO. Obviously, those cats ain't trying to pay no money for fights that have to take place at three o'clock, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon. And I would hope that they wouldn't go over there, man, and let the dude stay over at Showtime and get together with a Deontay Wilder fight. But that needs to happen next. And if he's trying to go over there to um, sneak somebody in, <laughs> that just tells you, man, that 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 Eddie Hearn knows where the money is. Because if the money really was what they say it is, now maybe it is for Anthony Joshua. Maybe the money is for what Anthony, the money is what it is for Anthony Joshua. Like he's making those type of paydays. But somebody is biting the bullet. Somebody is biting the bullet. The money's coming from, coming for him to get that big a cut, for him to get that big a cut of the money in a fight. That means somebody else is making less. So you probably have a scenario where Eddie Hearn, maybe Eddie Hearn and Barry Hearn and these guys are saying, look, we're going to take a loss or we're going to take a very slim profit on Anthony Joshua and we'll make a bigger profit on these other guys on the undercard or whatever. I don't even know other fights, other whatever in order to make that work. But eventually, you know, he's going to come to the United States because that's where you can really, really make the money. And people from the UK just... Man, it's just like you can always tell somebody that really hasn't taken the time to look and do the math. The money in the UK for these fights are nowhere near as big as what they are in Vegas. Not even close. And I'm telling you that, and I promise you, it's not even close. When you can do a million pay-per-views in the United States where you're paying an average of $80 per pay-per-view, that is $80 million, right? That's $80 million in pay-per-view just for domestic. Then you have a $26, $27 million gate. You're at $110 million on a million pay-per-views. That's the Gennady Golovkin numbers. And that's Canelo Alvarez, Gennady Golovkin. And honestly, Canelo Alvarez is probably the biggest star in the United States as far as like being able to sell tickets right now, as far as active fighters. But he's nowhere near tapping out the market of what could happen if you have a very, very popular American fighter or a very, very popular Amer- uh, fighter with, that's popular with the Latin community and the black community and the uh, European community in the United States. If you can galvanize that however you do it, that's when you're starting to run those big, you know, Floyd Mayweather Jr. type of numbers. You know what I mean? So you can bet that uh, Eddie Hearn is going to be coming to the United States. I've said this. I'm going to say it. I'm going to keep saying it. Now, how, Kel Brook, though, Kel, man, try to get you a cut. Try to get over here. Try to get that. Amer- <laughs> try to try to get on an undercard or something, dog, when when. Uh, on the Jermel Miller undercard or something, man. You want to come to the United States? I don't really. I'm just kind of. There's no scenario, man, where where Kel needs to come over here, man. Again, maybe if he fought like a Saddam Ali in New York, that could make it hot. He can make it hot with Saddam Ali. You know, Saddam Ali get Saddam Ali, and you know when uh, after Anthony Joshua and um, what's his name, Jarrell Miller, more than likely fight in New York City. Because like I said, I know dang well Eddie Hearn is coming to the United States, man. And he's bringing Anthony Joshua to the United States, man. He's got to. It's a lot of money over here. that not as much money over there. And then maybe that could be Kells Brooks' chance to do it. But, you know, either any way you cut it, man, whoever he fights, wherever he fights, whatever the scenario is that he takes his career, whatever direction he takes in his career, he needs to take that career in a direction away from the man you see on this screen who – Right, probably a second before, like, you know, tenth of a second before this picture was taken, broke this man's eyeball and is talking about breaking both of them and maybe a rib. He's just not on Errol Spence Jr.'s level, man. He's not. Maybe when he was, maybe before, I'm not going to say when he was younger, maybe before he was broken, 
maybe before he was injured, right? Then he could have, you know, maybe there was a chance that it would have turned out differently if he, um, you know, hadn't broken his eye socket against uh, Gennady Golovkin. But honestly, man, I don't think it would have. I think he was going to get knocked out regardless. Because the reason he can't see is because Errol Spence busts him in the eye and broke it. However, he busts his eye and he kept on tearing his ass up. But, you know, I guess, you know, wishful thinking, man. Wishful thinking. Kell Brook is not ready for Errol Spence. And I, but I'm looking forward to Carlos Ocampo. Hopefully this will, you know, I'm pretty sure it will be Carlos Ocampo in June um, with uh, Errol Spence Jr. in Dallas, Texas. Should be a good fight. Definitely want to see it. But, you know, I don't want to see, just like with, uh, as far as Errol Spence Jr., I don't want to see Errol. I'm not really, I just want to see Errol Spence in there with Keith Thurman. I want to see um, Deontay Wilder with Anthony Joshua. And there's no need to have these rehashes against guy, with guys which you know, a face full of titanium, man. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, and I'm out. Peace. <laughs>